Let me give you a piece of advice. He knows more than you can possibly imagine about photography. At last, welcome to you. As you no doubt have guessed, I am Michael Wessel. Do you believe in film photography? Let me tell you why you are here. Digital is a prison for your mind. Do you want to know what I'm talking about? The dark room? Do you know what it is? The dark room is the world where you open your eyes and it does you no good where you can't see your film while you're processing it. Fortunately, I can show you. Take the tray and continue this video. Or take the dip and dump tank and go to the next video. What the hell? I guess we're going to also do daylight tanks, so go to the third video. Let's go into the dark room and see how deep the drain goes. Our next um, option for actually doing darkroom work with our film is to do tray development. Uh, you can usually generally run between two sheets of film up to six sheets of film, maybe even eight at a go. Uh, agitation at, at this point is a little bit more difficult because you're going to have to handle the film a lot more with your hands. Uh, we're gonna definitely be wearing some latex gloves for this. Uh, the gloves are going to keep our hands from getting in, um, getting soaked in the chemistry, keep the chemistry out of our blood system because we don't want that to happen. We'll also want a fan on in the room just to make sure that uh, that we're getting oxygen in here, that the chemistry isn't going to uh, um, do any damage to our lungs. Um, so make sure that you actually are using good ventilation, no matter which of these processes that you're using um, from this video, either dip and dunk, uh, tank, uh, daylight tank, or the tray development. So with the uh, tray development, and this is the way that most photographers have done it, you need a tray that is uh, bigger than your film size by usually one, uh, one size. For example, I'm doing four by five sheet film, so I'm gonna have five by seven trays. If I was doing 8x10 uh, film, I'd want 11 by 14 trays. And if I had if I was doing um, uh, 11 by 14 or 16 by 20, I'm going to want bigger film trays that are going to be twice as big or you know as uh, bigger than my film size so that I can easily access the film and the film doesn't get stuck on the bottom. Also with the trays, I recommend highly that you get trays with uh, uh, with the uh, not uh, with grooves on the bottom. This way you can access and easily get the film out of the tray um, that you can get your fingers or a fingernail under the film and it doesn't stick to the bottom. These, uh, uh, you know, uh, the typical trays that we used to use in the dark room, these uh, are flat, have no ridges on the bottom. This um, is going to uh, be harder to get keep the film from getting scratched and being on the bottom of the of the tank of the tray. So when uh, running this, if you can uh, get these, this is better to have uh, ridges or uh, gaps underneath that you can get your fingers under your film. Um, so let's get started and take a look at how to do this. Again, this is going to be done completely in the dark. Um, so you'll have to do this completely in the dark, but I'm going to show you in daylight 
as a demo how to actually run your film through the trace system. So let's get started. So we're now ready to get started on our development trays. So we're going to fill up our trays. And the first thing I want to make sure that I do is put on my rubber gloves so that I don't get uh, any of the chemistry on my hands. So we're going to get our get these on and we'll get started here. Uh, the uh, trays, I've got five trays here lined up. Uh, each tray is going to receive either water or chemistry, depending on the uh, tray. Uh, the, the, tray. Uh, the first tray is going to be water. So um, in my first tray, I'm going to add water into the first tray. The second tray is going to be developer. Uh, and the uh, third tray is going to be stop bath. Fourth tray is fixer, and the last tray is going to be hypo clear. Into each of these trays, since I'm using five by seven um, trays here, I'm going to put 400 milliliters of liquid. For example, I'm going to get 400 milliliters of water for the first tray. I also want this to be at 68 degrees, so I'll actually want to ch check the uh, temperature. We'll get our tray filled up with our water. We've got our water in there and uh, we want to make sure that this, along with our um, um, temp uh, the temperature on our um, developer, are at 68 degrees. The first part of this, the water uh, that we put into the tray here, uh, the water itself needs to be at 68 degrees along with the, um, uh, the um, uh, developer because we are actually pre-soaking our film and getting the film ready to go into the developer. Uh, a pre-soak is all about, uh, some of the films actually have a tint on them. Um, it's, uh, it'll either turn the water green or blue, uh, and uh, some films don't, So, uh, but you need to usually do a pre-soak when doing tray development. So we're um, setting it up and getting it ready to go. So I'm at 68 degrees here. Uh, we'll add developer, so we'll get us some developer. So now we'll add our developer to our tray. Again, that's about 400 milliliters to 500 milliliters of liquid in a 5x7 tray. Uh, next, we're going to go and we'll get stop bath. Now we're going to put our stop bath in our tray. Our next one is fixer, so let's get some fixer. We've got our fixer and we're gonna add it to our tray. And lastly, we're gonna get hypoclear and put that in our last tray. And let's put our hypoclear into our tray. Tray moved on me that time. We'll just move the tray back in place. Uh, the trays can be fairly close together so that you can actually, when you're moving the film, it'll be a lot easier to actually do that. I keep a towel in the, uh, especially in this process, I make sure that I have a towel close by or handy so that I can dry off my gloves um, once I've got the chemistry in here. If I've got any chemistry, I might also want to, uh, on my gloves, I might want to rinse them off and make sure that uh, the chemistry is off of my gloves. We're going to get started with the tray development by uh, in the dark, we would pull our film from our film holders and then and make sure that you have a nice clean uh, space or some place to put your film. Um, uh, you can uh, also just, uh, as you remove a uh, sheet, uh, you can put it in and start it as the pre-soak. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull our sheet and I'm gonna do a four, uh, we're gonna do four uh, sheets here for our processing. So as I put it in the tray, I'm gonna push it in and make sure it gets completely covered by the liquid. I'm also going to move it around just a little bit to make sure that it is going to uh, not have any bubbles underneath it. Uh, while that one's in that tray, um, I wanna also make sure they're getting agitated. Uh, I'm gonna grab my second sheet of film and I'm going to put that over the top of my uh, the sheet that I put in here, but I want to make sure that uh, as I put it in that it's not touching the other sheet. All right, the, uh, that it touches the other sheet is fine, but I don't want it to uh, a dry area touching uh, a non uh, any areas that are not wet on another sheet of film can actually cause the film to stick together. We'll get another sheet. We'll take our sheet of film out again, making sure the emulsion side is down. I'm gonna put that sheet of film in there, dry my hand off and grab the last sheet of film here. 
You can also take all the sheets of film out and get them ready to go in the dark, just making sure that they're in a nice pile or someplace that they're not going to get damaged. Next, I'm going to make sure that I get uh, using my fingers here. I'm going to find the uh, bottom of the of the pile here and to agitate. Basically, I'm going to take one sheet of film and put it on top of the other sheet of film and just rotate them and continuously rotating them in the water, making sure that they are getting uh, agitation. Making sure that they're st staying under the chemistry. And I'm just gonna add, um, pull them out and agitate them as I pull them in and out. One on top of the other. Now, once I've been, they've been in here in the, in the uh, water for about a minute and done their pre-soak, and I've agitated them for that minute. I'm going to take my first sheet, usually the bottom sheet, and I'm going to slide it into the developer. And I'm going to make sure that it goes into the developer. Once it's in the developer, it's going to start its development. Um, I want to make sure that there's no, it's not getting any bubbles underneath it. Um, so when I slide this in, I kind of slide it in at an angle and get all of these sheets of film put on top of each other. Do not uh, let uh, more than one, uh, if uh, you've got uh, four sheets of film, make sure that they go into the developer separately. Do not get them into the developer singly uh, or together because if you do, they will stick together and you won't be able to get them apart. So uh, make sure that they go in individually. Then I'm going to start my agitation process. I'm just going to pull one from the top or from the bottom and I will just continuously agitate for the first 30 seconds. So I need to set my time on my timer. So um, the time on my timer is going to be set to whatever the time is for my film, say seven minutes for this, uh, uh, this particular film. And the timer starts. I'm going to run. I'm going to continuously agitate for the first 30 seconds. So that means just moving the film in and out of the tray, making sure that I'm not getting any bubbles making sure that each uh, one of them gets dipped back underneath the liquid. Um, I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to get scratches, so I kind of let them float. Just get my hands underneath them, or my fingers underneath them. When I reach that first 30 seconds, I want to make sure that top one gets um, underneath the liquid really well. I'm going to let them sit, and uh, as they're sitting here waiting, um, I can actually do a little bit of agitation just back and forth and make sure the liquid's moving around a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to wait that 30 seconds till the clock gets to zero. Once the clock is at zero, which it is now, I'm going to start my rotation again and I'm going to start my development. So um, again, I'm going to rotate these for every uh, for every um, um, sheet. I'm going to rotate these for 10 seconds. And once the 10, uh, I'm 20 seconds, I'm sorry, 20 seconds for the first 20 seconds. That way I make sure that each sheet gets uh, rotated. 20 seconds is up. I'm gonna let, um, I'm just gonna make sure that there's no bubbles in there. Kind of tap the tray a little bit. Make sure there's no bubbles underneath there. Let them sit for the next minute <coughs> until it gets to zero. You can also um, make sure that you have good ventilation in your dark room while you're doing this. Uh, so that uh, you uh, stay nice, uh, it stays nice and uh, crisp in here, and you don't uh, breathe in a lot of the chemistry. You're usually hovering over the top of this. Uh, sometimes I'll bring in a stool if I've got a low counter like this to actually do this, so I can sit on the stool and I'll maybe put on my headphones. Again, you don't want any light in here, so if you've got a timer that's too close to the uh, chemistry, make sure it's not too close to the chemistry, because if it is, uh, the uh, timer can actually light up your uh, film and you don't want that to happen. Again, at the zero mark, which I just missed, um, I'm going to rotate my film, making sure that it's getting agitated for about 10 seconds. And then again, I'll just uh, knock any, make sure that there's no bubbles underneath that film. Uh, once I've got, uh, it'll go through another minute, and I'm just gonna go through my time until seven minutes is up. Our development time is up, so we're going to now move our film to our stop bath. The stop bath is our next stop on our uh, film development here. So let's uh, move our film over. To do this, we're going to do one sheet at a time uh, so that they don't stick together. So we're gonna slide the film into the stop bath. 
Using my other hand, I'm going to um, uh, place in the next sheet. I'm going to make sure that these don't get uh, don't hit the bottom so much because I don't want them to get scratched as I'm developing. And I'm going to pull these over. I also don't want to move chemistry up uh, uphill here, so I want to make sure that I'm using you know that I never bring the stop bath on my gloves back into the developer in case I'm going to continue to actually develop film with these, this chemistry. Uh, once I have it in the stop bath, I'm going to start my timer at one minute. And I'm going to hit uh, the timer here and get started. And I'm going to agitate for that entire one minute, making sure that the film Goes um, goes on top of each other just like we were agitating it before. And as I do this, I'm going to make sure that the uh, you know it's not brushing against the bottom as much as possible, just to keep the film from actually getting damaged. We don't want scratches on the film. Uh, that will uh, be bad when we're actually trying to uh, de um, go to print. Um, the film can actually kind of be somewhat sticky, so make sure that you get the film completely under the stop bath as we as you work. Once the minute is up, which it is almost up, we're going to move to the fixer here in just a second. To move to the fixer, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, st um, when the timer gets up, we're going to move it to five minutes. And as it moves to uh, the five minute mark, I'm going to then slide my fi uh, film into the fixer. Again, I'm going to use my left hand uh, to move the uh, film into the, uh, uh, into the fixer, uh, and, but I'm not going to bring any of that chemistry back over. I'm going to um, agitate this film for the first 30 seconds, just like I did with the developer. And then for every one minute of, uh, of fixing, I'm going to um, do 20 seconds of uh, agitation. Now, the other way that you can do this and that some um, prof uh, other uh, professionals prefer is that you can do for every, uh, instead of 30, uh, every minute, uh, you just agitate continuously the entire time. Uh, so that's uh, just one, uh, one of the op other options. Uh, so everybody has their ways of doing things. In this case, uh, I like to do it for the first uh, 30 seconds. And then after I get done with the first 30 seconds, I make sure that there's no bubbles on there and I let it fix. So I'm not gonna let it fix until it gets back to the zero. Or in this case, until I, I went a little long, so I'm gonna wait here until it gets to the 30 second mark here and then I'll do 20 seconds um, of agitation. So this way it's uh, fixing. And we're doing this still. We're still in the dark. We're doing this completely in the dark. Uh, again, uh, the one thing about certain trays is, is if you have these flat trays like I have in here right now, then getting your fingers underneath them and starting them again can be a problem, or, uh, be problematic. Uh, so just be careful as you try to lift the film up that you're not scratching it um, and getting marks on it. We're going to run this for uh, the five minutes, or uh, we could go all the way up to ten minutes. At about five minutes, though, I'm going to pull the, I'm going to turn the lights on in the dark room generally, check the film, and make sure that the film looks good. If the film has got a bit of a pink tinge to it, then we know that it's not quite developed. I know that T-Max actually does have a, a, a bit of a purple tinge to it, even when it is just still wet. Uh, but most other films uh, will become clear once they've gone through the completely through the fixing time. If you do see that the fixer is uh, is actually pink, or I mean the film is still pink, and the the, uh, the um, what you can do is just fix for a little longer time. Also check your fixer to make sure that the fixer is good by using. Uh, hypo clear drops to uh, our hypo um, solution drops like these to just check the um, uh, this is hypo clear drops yeah, or hypo check drops sorry not hypo clear drops hypo check drops uh, use the hypo clear uh, check drops to drop in a couple of drops and make sure your chemistry is still good. Once our five minutes is up, uh, we'll check our film, make sure that it is good. Uh, if the film is good to go and we have and it's clear, nice and clear. We're going to move it now to the HypoClear. The HypoClear is an optional, um, is kind of optional. 
Uh, if you have HypoClear, great. If you uh, ran out, uh, you can always, instead of using the HypoClear here, you can also uh, just wash your film for a longer period of time. That would be the other way to go. Um, if you do have HypoClear, it's for the first three, uh, it's three minutes of uh, full agitation. So we'd move each sheet of film uh, one at a time into, again, using, uh, our, we're just going to use the left and right hands to do this. So we've got our left hand moving the film over to uh, and handing it to the right. That way no chemistry gets moved upstream and our film goes directly into the hypoclear. We'll set our timer to three minutes. Once the timer is going, I can start agitating my film for the three minutes and continuously agitate for the entire three minutes. This is going to remove any um, hypo or uh, fixer off of the film, um, but not all of it. You'll still need to wash for 10 minutes after you get this done. So we're going to keep, um, keep going until our three minutes is up. So this is continuous agitation until three minutes is up. Once our three minutes is up, then we're going to move it to the wash. Uh, so let's take a look at how to wash. We've just got done developing our film, and it's time now to run our film through the uh, washer. The washer needs to uh, uh, run for about 10 minutes. Our arch archival washer uh, will take about uh, uh, 10 minutes to run uh, since we ran this through HypoClear. If you haven't run it through HypoClear, you might want to, uh, you'll need to uh, wash your film for about 30 minutes to an hour. Um, since we've our, um, run this through HypoClear, our next step is, is to run the washer for the 10 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to unload our film. We're going to uh, pull the film out by the edge and putting the emulsion side, um, facing the emulsion side back towards the, um, the back of the film tank. We're going to place the uh, film in the slot. So this is just going to slide down in the slot. I'm going to stagger the film as I put it in here. Um, just uh, so that uh, we, we can put the uh, lid on the top and um, that will hold the film in place as the washer is washing the film. So we're going to stagger these a little bit, make sure, and also it'll help to clean the film if I don't uh, load the whole entire uh, um, archival washer. This archival washer takes up to about eight sheets of film. So by staggering these, it also is just going to keep the lid in place and it'll also keep, uh, get the film cleaner as it's working. We'll take the lid and put the lid on top of the film just like this. And then once that's in place, we're gonna turn the water on and make sure that the water is running at a fairly decent rate. We don't wanna overdo it. It doesn't need to be running really super fast. Just enough to make sure that the uh, water is uh, going over the film, um, spraying across the film, and um, then cleaning the film at, uh, of uh, fixer. Uh, this is, like I said, this is going to take about 10 minutes to do. Uh, we're going to let it fill up. It'll do its, um, it'll fill up and it'll keep the, uh, get the film nice and clean. And then what we'll do is we'll photo flow this afterwards. So let's go on to photo flowing. We're now going to um, uh, use photo flow to clean our negatives with and get any leftover chemistry off. Plus it's, um, um, photo flow is um, a detergent basically that is anti-static so it should keep dust off of the, uh, the film. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take our sheet of film and just dunk it in the uh, liquid for about, 10 uh, for about 10 to 20 seconds, or up to a half minute. Um, just uh, about 10, 15 dunks is about all you really need. And we'll uh, dip it and dunk it until it's uh, ready. Once it's ready, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a squeegee and we're going to squeegee off the film itself. So we're going to take the film and just put it between the squeegee and just run the squeegee down it real quick to get all the liquid off of it. Again, that's just one run. Uh, so if we've dipped it and we have it dunked, we can just take the squeegee and just run it once over the film. You don't want to do it multiple times, just a single uh, uh, squeegee time is all you really need. Now we're going to put this in the film dryer. We just got done squeegeeing our film, and the film is still wet, and we want to handle it with care. Make sure that you're handling it by the edges, that you don't actually touch the center of the film. Uh, we want to keep it as, uh, as clean as possible. 
We also want to get it in the dryer as quickly as possible, but the th couple of things that you need to know. Make sure that the film dryer is off before you go to put the film in it so that you're not blowing dust on any other sheets of film. We've already loaded a couple of sheets of film in here from our shoot, so we're going to take this uh, piece of film and get it into our dryer. The dryer's off. Let's open up the door. And then we've got uh, racks in here for us to um, hang out uh, and hangers. We're going to turn this hanger here so that um, we can put this uh, piece of film on here. We're just going to hang it by one corner. Just clip it on that one corner and let it um, hang there. We want to make sure that it's not going to touch any other sheet film in here that we've got hanging so that they don't stick together. Once we've got that in place and it's nice and hanging here uh, separately and it's not going to touch anything, then we're going to go ahead and close the door here. Lock it and shut it tight. Uh, then we might grab another sheet of film if we had more film and do the next sheet of film. So from here, what we're going to do is, um, since we're loaded, we got everything loaded in here. What we're going to do is we're going to set the timer up here to about 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, to do that, we'll just dial it in here. So 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to set our heat um, between medium and low. We don't want to go high with this. We don't want our film to get overheated really quickly and actually become brittle or break on us. So we're going to um, do this on about medium heat. We'll turn it on and let the fan start up as it goes. And this is going to allow us to get our film dry in a pretty reasonable amount of time. Generally, somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes is how long it takes. Let's say, for example, you need to walk out of the house or away from uh, the uh, studio or wherever your dark room, wherever you're drying your film and you don't have time to stay. Leave the dryer off and let the film just sit and dry in the drying cabinet by itself, uh, air drying. Uh, that'll allow you to just be able to come back in in about 24 hours or less, probably 12 hours, uh, to come in, check your film, make sure it's completely dry. Once it's dry, you can take it out of the film cabinet. For our last step, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get our film out of the drying cabinet, which is right behind me, and we're going to put our film into sleeves. Sleeves come usually uh, for a four by five specifically, are going to just be have four different uh, um, places to put our film, and we'll take a look at this as I go along. So, And then I have a notebook to put them in to keep them nice and safe and clean. Uh, if you've got an enclosed notebook, that's better because it'll actually keep dust and uh, humidity out of the book as much much as possible. Let's get started with uh, getting these out of the um, out of our uh, drying cloth uh, cabinet. So we're going to open up the drying cabinet, and we want to make sure this stays closed as uh, often as possible, so that we don't get more and more dust in here. Um, the uh, timers went off. We are ready to pull these. Uh, as you saw when we hung these a few minutes ago, it's been about 20 minutes. We've got our negative, our first negative. I'm going to put this in my. Um, I'm going to put this emulsion side. Um, down or back in my sleeve so that when it goes into my sleeve, the um, the notches should be on the top left-hand corner. I'll slide that in there. And then this will go into my notebook as soon as I grab all the rest of the film. We just got done doing our film development demo. That's the main part of this video. So now we're going to actually develop our film. Let's uh, get into developing our film in the dark. So we're going to, um, Tony, uh, if you would, please uh, pull the lights for us. Okay, I've got um, the film here, uh, uh, getting them loaded. Uh, Tony, does this look okay in the camera? Ah, uh, need a little, little left. Okay, I've got, I think, is that good? Yep, right there. Okay, excellent. All right, um, you need to make sure that as you're doing this, what you want to do is pull the film out at a certain angle uh, so that uh, you can actually see the film in the dark. Um, I can see this film just perfectly, and everything is going okay, but I just realized something, Tony. Tony? I'm afraid of the dark, Tony. <laughs>